Okay. So do we have any uh, question uh, up to this point of time? No question? Okay, let's uh, proceed. So with the same technique, right? Okay, so basically with the same technique, any problem there? Okay, so with the same technique, we can actually check the age group uh, and we, we can actually explore the relationship between age group and weekday, right? So in this mosaic plot, we basically see uh, how uh, how the edge group, uh, see different edge group have a different uh, time distribution, right? See that? So uh, the, actually uh, this older customer, they, 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 they don't, relatively, they, they, they don't come to the store uh, in, Sunday, right? Older, uh, this older generation, they uh, relatively um, come to the store more often in the weekday and not in the weekend, right? See? And you're uh, the 30, 38, 34, 39, they actually, uh, Right? Uh, they come to the store relatively more often in uh, Sunday and not in the weekday. See that? Okay? So, uh, this kind of like, like, uh, mosaic plot, um, it helps you to do a uh, uh, joint distribution of two categorical variable and that is often very useful for strategic planning, right? See that? Okay? But because mosaic plot is a plot that is not included in ggplot, right? See that? In, in ggplot, we don't really have a mosaic <laughs> type of uh, ggplot, right? So, uh, the uh, so we spend some time, right, to uh, because of its importance, right. I I think it's uh, a very useful tool for business data analysis, uh, that, and that's why we spend some time to uh, teach you to use it. So to use it, uh, you basically need to. Uh, you have to load this library. You need to load uh, this package called VCD and uh, and I basically uh, uh, do a, a easier function for you, right? Because the mosaic function by itself uh, you need to type in a lot of uh, to, to use the mosaic function uh, by itself, usually you need to set up a lot of uh, parameters. This parameter is actually just to make it uh, look better, right? Okay. So I, I, I kind of write a, a helper function, MOSA, for you, right? So to use this MOSA function, you simply just put the two categorical variable, right? You, 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 you do a tilde, and then after the tilde, you like just plus the two categorical variable, right? The first variable is this direction. The second variable is this direction, okay? So it's kind of easy to use, right? And, and simply put your data frame here, okay? 
and you will count the numbers of each area combination and visualize and visualize the the the, uh, the count of each of these combination uh, in this way. Okay, get it. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that you need to be careful for is like like is that this one. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the the categorical variable there are too many uh, unique values. For example, like category, you have two thousand category, right? So uh, if you have two thousand uh, too too many category, then it's not very useful to it's not appropriate to use uh, mosaic, right? Uh, one way to do that is that you can actually Choose the top twenty, top thirty, right? So and then you can uh, do that uh, easier. Yeah. So is it similar to calling a function in other programming language like Python or SQL? Like the top twenty, like uh, this, you can use it later. You can just enter it into another function, like calling the mosaic, calling the top twenty inside the mosaic. Right, right, right. The, 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 the top 20 things is just... Uh, this line of code is just to find the name of the top 20 category, right? So uh, now you have this data object. You have a data object here called top 20, isn't it? So... Uh, So you have this top 20 uh, category, right? So as you can see here, this is how we do it in R, right? Uh, we are doing, uh, see? Here we are doing an index, right? Kind of use it for selection, right? We select all of the, from this Z0, uh, uh, data frame, right? We kind of uh, choose all of the product item that belongs to the top 20, isn't it? Okay, so this is actually a subset of Z to C0, isn't it? Okay, and then, so this is the data and this is what we want to see, okay? So now you can see the um, the H and top 20 category uh, joint distribution like this. Okay. Question? Okay. So Mosaic Plot is actually a very useful tool for data exploration. Uh, but uh, In the other in the other course, they uh, they are kind of like overlooks, like uh, in some of the statistic course, they will teach you, uh, uh, they teach chi square, uh, kind of testing, yeah, but in order to connect the chi square testing to practical uh, usage you'll need to do something like that, okay? This is how you put the chi square testing to use, I should say that, okay? Okay, so this is for uh, TF2, okay? Let's proceed and go to TF3, okay?
רוחו יצאת. אוקיי, so, um, when we say that we want to explore the data, right, um, from time to time, first of all, we need to determine what is our subject of interest, okay? Um, and usually the most important subject in business is customer, right? Uh, you want to understand how you can create value, how you can acquire your profit from your customer, right? But each customer are different, right? Uh, so how can we have a, a, a better understanding of our customer, right? It, it seems that it's, it, it is impossible to understand every single customer, right? So you basically need to uh, kind of like um, cluster your customer by group, okay? And, and compare the, the, the characteristic of each different group uh, before you can like, like understand and set strategy on your customer groups, right? So customer need to customer into group, but there are so many different ways, right, to customer your, to, 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 to do grouping, right? Um, actually, uh, next week, we'll spend some more time and, and, and using some advanced uh, technology to do grouping, right? But before that, before that, I would like to, like, do some general exploration on the customer, right? That's what we want to do in this notebook, okay? So, uh, first, of all, first of all, let's read in the data, right? And again, we have uh, these three basic data frame, okay? Now, within this data frame, we have like uh, 32,000 customer. Um, let's see uh, this code chunk. The first thing is like, like because we, we, we if, we cannot see the like like thirty two thousand customer, right? But uh, actually, we can uh, kind of like do some filtering, right? We can do some filtering on the customer, so we can see the most important customer to us, right? So that's how uh, D prior and GG plot uh, come into play. Right? So you have A0, and this is actually the, the uh, uh, customer data frame, right? And I do a 200 and row. What does it mean? Anyone? This top N is actually a filter, right? Mm -hmm. It actually filled out the 2,000 customer with the largest row is actually the row profit, right? It's the row profit, isn't it? Uh, let's, let, let's take a look at the data again. customer and this is the RFS, RFM S and then this is the revenue, total revenue contribution, right? And this is the total profit contribution, okay? So this first customer, 
he actually have a total revenue contribution of 1944 okay uh, he buy four times and in average every time he buy 486 right uh, the so its margin is actually very low right okay <laughs> less than one percent sorry R is actually the residency. Uh, is the uh, is the period since the last time he buy from us. So it's nineteen days ago is the last time that this customer come to us, and the S is actually the first time he buy from us. The first time that uh, he come to us is like one hundred and. Uh, eight days ago, and the last time he come to us is like nineteen days ago. Okay, it's kind of like that. Um, four is the number of free uh, time he buy from us. The M is the average uh, buying amount, and this is the actually if you time these two together, you'll get this. Okay, revenue contribution, and this is the profit contribution, and then his age group and his area, right? So this is the raw data for, this is the data for customer, right? So before you can, actually, before you can do analysis on a subject, you need to aggregate data, you need to summarize data, so that every rows of the data frame represent one of this subject, right? And that is exactly what we do here. Right? From Z, we do group by summary, Mac X. And from X, we do group by and summary, Mac A. Isn't it? Right? So before you can analyze any subject, first thing you need to do is you need to aggregate the data so that every row of a data frame represents one of the subject. Right? That is the first thing you want to do. And that's how we do, uh, usually we will do this by the group by summary uh, type of uh, command in dplyr, okay? Now let's go back to this one. So first thing we filter out the uh, 200 uh, customer with the largest uh, profit contribution, right? And then we do another filter. R uh, should be larger than 45, okay? Uh, why do I want to do that? Well, I think I think there are some uh, mistake here. If we if we want to do the the uh, I think originally it should be something like this, right? It must be that I, I, I do some modification on the code and then I forget to <laughs> uh, I set the code uh, I set the code uh, incorrectly. Okay, if we choose like 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 the the uh, top five hundred, right? If we, if we really want to see the top 500 customer, this is what we should do, right? Top 500 uh, customer with the largest revenue, then that's why we choose it, okay? And then after we choose this 500 customer, we can put, uh, this is the F, 
right? And this is the M, right? This is the buying frequency, and this is actually the uh, the uh, average buying amount, right? And the bubble size is actually the what profit, right? And the uh, uh, color is actually the residency, right? Um, so as you can see that uh, most of this uh, high uh, value customer, the uh, their residency are pretty low, right? See. Um, but some of them actually are, are especially the people here, for example, like this, this one, right? This customer, he uh, actually do not buy from us for uh, seven, eight days already, right? See, so this is other, these are the high value customer, right? So if a high-value customer is not buying from us for a long time, you might want to make him a call, right? You might want to send him a coupon. If you are using mobile app, you might want to send him a like, coupon and try to pull him back to you, isn't it? Right? See? So, uh, so this is the way that we do it, right? Uh, Let me do it a little easy. It's easier to see. So we do a filter by dplyr, and then we put the result into ggplot, right? And then we can start comparing their uh, average buying amount, their buying frequency, compare their residency, Compare their uh, right, revenue contribution. See? And then uh, this label is important, right? If I, if I simply do this, right? Actually, I will see a GG plot, right? And this GG plot has 500 customer inside, okay? Um, this is not very useful, right? I, I can see that there are 500 customer here, but I cannot see who is this one, who is this one, who is this one, right? In order to make it useful, um, usually we need to set this GG plot into an object, right? And try to render the plot interactively, okay? So the way to do that is to set the ggplot as an object and then use the ggplotly, right? To make an interactive plot, right? Uh, after, doing, after doing that, see, here we will have an object, right? This object is actually a ggplot. Right. And we can use a ggplotly to display the plot interactively. Okay. And the reason that I want to put the label here is uh, if I do not put it here, you, you, you cannot see the customer ID. See that? Um, if I do not do that, let's see what will happen. You can still see the plot, but there is no customer ID, see? If you do not have the customer ID, you do not know who you want to take action. You see, right? So uh, that is the importance of data uh, interactive visualization. And in order to do interactive visualization, uh, there is a good practice, right? You, you, you always want to put the uh, the, the, 
the ID of the subject uh, in the aesthetic, okay, with label, so that uh, when you want to see, uh, because it, this chart is actually very uh, interactive, right? So when you zoom in, you can see that who is this one. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, I need to put it again. So after you do that, you can see who is this one, right? So you can take action uh, on the people of choice, isn't it? Right? So this is one way to observe your customer, right? You do filtering and filter out the most profitable uh, or if you want to see the if I if I if I do this then I'll see that see this is the top five customer with the largest revenue contribution okay a little bit different from the thing right uh, actually, you can change the right size into also into revenue. See that? Okay. Well, if you if you look into this chart, um, basically, uh. In addition to uh, that you can see the uh, detail of each point, you actually can see a structure. Can you? Okay. As you can see that uh, the, um, uh, there is kind of like a people in this area, they are high buying frequency, right? And people in this area, they are low buying frequency. Okay, so these are the high buying frequency people, uh, with lower average, uh, buying amount, and these are the high, uh, high amount buyer, but their buying frequency are low, right? And you can see that usually, your most important customer is in this area. Right? See? So, by visualizing your most important customer, uh, you can actually, in this plot, you can actually group your customer, right? In different type. And if you want to uh, set the strategy, you can set some strategy to kind of like for for this customer, I want to uh, because they are high buying frequency, right? But low buying amount, right? So uh, if I if I can find a way to increase their buying amount, right? This customer will be a high potential to grow, isn't it? Right? And in the other side. This type of customer, they are high buying amount, but low buying frequency, right? See, so if I can find a way to kind of like increase their buying frequency, then it is also a very useful strategy that I can do to my customer, isn't it? Okay? So this is one way to explore your uh, customer, right? Use uh, use this kind of like top end filtering type of uh, command, right? So you can set 
you can actually uh, kind of like uh, find your most important customer, right? And there's another way to, in this way, we are actually uh, seeing the customer one by one, right? Okay. Uh, and the other way, let's see. To do that is actually we can uh, kind of like uh, try to segment, do two segment in our customers, okay? Um, here I try to like, uh, let's see. I try to mutate the uh, a few, I try to mutate a few uh, column in A0, okay? And let's see. Uh, see, in A, I create the, uh, uh, I, I kind of like, do two label, the M label, M1, M2, M3, M4. And this is the first quarter. The, the customer with the highest average buying amount are in M4. The lowest buying amount are in M1, okay? Uh, and the same for frequency, right? Uh, F4 is the customer with the highest buying frequency, and this is the customer with the lowest buying frequency, right? And with this label, I actually can uh, kind of like, uh, segment my customer into like 16 group, right? Okay? And then I can like, uh, what am I doing here? I do uh, that generate the largest profit. So I, I try to find out the, uh, the 100 category that generate the largest profit, okay? So this is the uh, category, right? And then I, uh, uh, Kind of like like so this category actually generates so many revenue, and this revenue actually uh, count for like four percent of our total revenue, right? Okay, so this code actually. Uh, try to find out the top 100 category that like, generate the large, actually this is not profit, this should be revenue, right? Because I'm counting price, okay. And I do uh, uh, inner join. The reason I want, to, I want to do an inner join is because that, uh, uh, so far I only want to have uh, the, the uh, Um, I only want to keep the the transaction, right? That belong to uh, this customer groups, okay? And then I can like and then I can do the Okay, this is kind of um, a little bit complicated. Let me try to do that again, okay? So first of all, I try to like separate my customer into 16 group, right? According to their buying frequency and their buying amount, okay? Average buying amount, okay? That's the first thing I do, right? 
And the second thing I do is actually I try to like find out the 100 product category that are generating most of uh, the largest the revenue. Okay, and I want to see the relationship between them, right? I want to find out. Um, we have I have sixteen, I have sixteen uh, customer group, right? And I want to find out that uh, the, the buying preference for each of these customer groups. You, you get my point, okay? Uh, as I say, because if I look into every individual customer, it would be uh, too many groups, and I cannot see the detail, right? So the strategy is kind of you can use some labeling technology, right? Try to separate your customer into different groups, right? We, we will, we will uh, uh, have some more uh, classing method uh, uh, cover in our next uh, next session, okay? For now, we just very simply use F and M to, uh, to kind of like chop our customer into 16 segments, right? And I want to know that um, this different segment of customer, do they have different buying, do they have different preference on this 100 product category, right? I, I want to understand what type of customer like to buy what type of product, right? That's, that's the thing that I'm trying to understand, right? See, you, and so if I want to do that, the first thing I need to, first of all, in the A data frame, I need to do a label, right? See, so, So up to this point, I will have a data frame called A, right? And this data frame has a label, right? For, ex for example, uh, this customer is M2F3, and this customer is M2F3, right? And this customer is M1F1. See that? Okay. And then, uh, And then I try to uh, find out the uh, top 100 category, right? Okay. So, uh, so I, can, I can do a table, right? I can make a table like this, right? Okay. So... Uh, this is M1, F1, and this is the number of purchase, right? Uh, that this group of people buying this category of product, right? Okay? Uh, the way to do that is actually using the X10 uh, function, okay? And this X10 function actually, see, it actually use MF and CAT, right? And for every M, F, and C, A, T combination, it would uh, kind of like summarize the price, okay? So this A, A, 3, 8, it means that in total, all of this customer in this group by category 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, this is the total number of purchase, okay? And so... After I do this table, uh, I can visualize this table, right? Uh, in this direction, I have 16 customer group. And it is, in this direction, I have like 100 product category. See? 
So if I can like visualize uh, this table, okay, uh, I will be able to see, right, which group uh, has the preference on um, which product category, okay? And you, when you actually do that, you will see something like this, okay? You will see that <laughs> most of the revenue actually concentrate on a few customer group and only a few product category, okay? That, there is a tool on, um, let's look at the code later, okay? Let's look at the result first, okay? So if you, if you really make the table like this, right? You have a customer group and you have the product category and you try to like set the, this is the heat map, okay? Say. So it, does that mean that the, the orange and the red, these are the product categories that are most sold, most bought by that group of people? Right, right. But uh, actually, actually, this heat map are visualizing this data table, right? And what is this data table? This data table is like, this is the customer group, okay? And this is the product category, okay? So first of all, I need to have this table, right? And uh, in every one of the cell in the table is the total revenue that this group of people spend on this product category, right? And if I give you this large table, you cannot see anything, right? So I need to visualize this table so you can see, so you can see the uh, preference, the difference of preference between each customer group, okay? Uh, and in order to visualize this table, I actually uh, write a function for you, right? It's HMAP1, okay? So this HMAP is very easy. You just, just give it the, you just give it the, uh, uh, this table, right? The data table and you just use the HMAP1, okay? And this is just, just to choose the color scheme, right? It's, uh, cool warm, right? This is cool warm color, okay? So when you do that, you will see that most of the revenue are generated by these three uh, customer group and, and uh, these two product category, right? See? And this is not very useful, right? It's not very useful, right? Um, but unfortunately, in most of the uh, business data set, this is the case it is, okay? It's like, most of the revenue are generated by only a, a few product group and only a few uh, product category, isn't it, right? It's not very useful for you, right? So usually you need to do some normalization on this data table, okay? Uh, what I mean by normalization is kind of like, as you can see that, because each of this, uh, because we set separate our customer by their buying frequency and buying amount, right? So uh, by this definition, uh, this, uh, the high M and high F, they are buying a lot, right? Because they are generating a lot of revenue by itself. So comparing them directly with M1, F1, does not make sense, isn't it, right? So instead of comparing their um, absolute buying number, right? If we can actually like, like normalize in this di direction, I means that I, I add, add up all of the 
number here, okay? And uh, I, I changed the number here uh, from value to proportion. Which means if, if if I can if I can th this is product category right uh, this is the amount the amount that uh, they buy right but if I can change this amount into proportion into percentage see okay so in a way that uh, for for each of this customer group. It looks like that they, 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 they only spend 100, right? So, and then I, I change this absolute amount uh, into ratio, okay? Now I can see the preference. Now I can prefer the preference, isn't it? Right? Because uh, after I, I add all of this number and use it as the denominator, right? And, and, and I use this number as the nominator, right? In this way, I can kind of like, I can kind of like uh, transfer, transfer this matrix in this direction, right? I transfer this matrix in, in this direction from value into proportion. And the proportion actually can reflect the preference of this product, this customer group, right? See that? So if we want to like kind of visualize and compare a close customer group, there is one important technique called normalization. Okay. Try to transfer the number into proportion. So you can see that uh, different group of customer, they have different preference. Right? Isn't it? So, uh, so this graph is not very useful, but uh, how, if, if I do this, right, in, in R, it's actually uh, very easy to do uh, normalization, okay? I simply do a raw sum, right? This is the raw sum, is it? I, I sum the raw and use it as the denominator, and I put the original number as the denominator. And this kind of like normalize the data in this direction. You see that? Okay. So after I do that, I do the heat map again. Okay? Then you can see the difference. See? Okay. Uh, you can see that uh, these four group of customer, they prefer to buy this product category, right? And uh, this four group, they are basically buying this. Seeing that? Okay. So, uh, in this notebook, I try to, uh, I try to cover two things, right? The first thing is that if you want to visualize, you want to explore each individual customer, it's almost impossible, okay? So the first strategy you can do is you can do some filter, right? Um, you can use whatever filter you like to, right? And after the filtering, you then push the data into ggplot, and then you can see the, right? You use filter to, to, to select a specific group of interest and then focus on that group of interest to do analysis. That is one strategy, right? The second strategy is like, uh, you want to um, do some segmentation, right? Separate your customer into groups and then compare, their, and compare across the customer group. One way to compare the customer group is to do metric and to do heat map, right? Especially when you want to know the buying preference 
the product preference of each different product group, each different customer group. Let me say it again. If you want to know the the uh, product preference, the difference of product different, the difference of product category preference on different customer groups, then what you can do is you can use the matrix to uh, in R, it's, there's a very convenient way for you to build a matrix, okay? And then you can put the matrix into a heat map, right? But before doing that, you will, you need to kind of like make the customer group comparable, okay? Uh, the way to make the customer group comparable, usually, is you need to do the normalization uh, in another word specifically you transfer the number into proportion okay because the proportion can reflect the the the, the product reference product preference of each of the customer group right so that set up that establish the base of comparison right so if you do it right, then you can see the different buying preference on different product groups. I'm sorry, on different customer groups. See that? Okay, uh, this is 11.05 already. Let's take a 10 minutes break and go back to class at 11.15, okay?